Well, people, welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, uh, take a look at some of the uh, things, maybe just a little bit off-road, but always, always Linux and open source related. I am Vinstone. <laughs> That is Joe Bryant, and over there, returning back from the dead, Lazarus, Lazarus, Hi. Mateus, <laughs> <laughs> and everyone joining us at home, watching us live, all the fun stuff. Um, what's going on, beautiful people? Anything new and exciting, Pedro? We missed out an entire week of your shenanigans, man. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. I mean, it's been mostly work and that the Nori um cracked one of her teeth, so we had to run to um the emergency room last Wednesday. That's why I was not here. I do apologize, but uh yeah. <laughs> that uh, that very much took precedence. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, no, she's good now. Uh, she just needs to finish off the uh, antibiotics, and then she can go to the dentist and get that fixed proper. Okay. That's that's all we're waiting for now. <laughs> right on, Joe. Yeah. So I've been doing lots of podcasting here on LGC and for Destination Linux. So I've been busy. <laughs> been busy. Been talking a lot. Yeah. Yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> man i get all my talking out of, out of my system on wednesdays and saturdays i'm done i'm like oh, i'm just gonna go yeah. back to being silent where's a good corner <laughs> but, out, i've been playing around with a couple of things man um I've, I've actually decided to just like torch a video i was working on a video for um setting up the filters in obs for just audio you know your basic gating compression noise removal and all that I played with it, played back, and I spent a day and I went back and listened to it. I'm like, it sounds horrible. Like, don't use anything inside of OBS for audio processing. It just, it's genuinely bad. So what I've decided to do is first I got to finish. Um, we were talking in the uh, pre-show last week. Jordan's like, I'm getting the ox runs. And I'm like, okay. So I need to make a, uh, like a proper jack setup for your box. But I got done with that. It's an... It's thing I'm going to post uh, probably for everyone else too, but I'm going to make like a simplified version of how to set up a digital mixer, get some real audio plugins set up completely free and how to tie that into OBS in like a very simplified way. I, we were talking in the pre-show, I'm, I'm going to see if it uh, passes the Pedro sniff test. And if it does, <laughs> yeah, um, I'll put that out there and uh, we'll, we'll probably beat it test it. I'll, I'll throw it up for patrons. But like, hey, go try this and see if this works. And I might have to make some revisions to it. So keep an eye out for that nonsense. Um, what else did I do? Oh, I fixed, uh, I repaired one of my old uh, Washburn guitars and it didn't uh, fall apart and fold in half. And that was fun. <laughs> I, I was excited about that. I'm just like carefully listening. I want to hear like, Kring. <laughs> oh, there it went. <laughs> <laughs> Doing. fun times but let's get right into it ladies and gentlemen because linus wants arms he really <laughs> does man uh, this is coming from the next web uh, you know, uh, I, I saw this one. oh look at you next web trying to load a video script block kids oh <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, there's the new Mac sound. We know you got the Mac Mini and the laptops based on the M1 processor. And Linus chimed in himself. He's like, I'd absolutely love to have one if it just ran Linux. Well, we saw that coming, right? Mm -hmm. um, he, he said he had really fond memories of his 11-inch uh, MacBook Air and um, apparently the screen broke or something like that. And Apple took too long to fix it, so he moved away. But yeah, like I think everyone, and probably everyone listening to this show, let me know. Really, we've been waiting for an ARM laptop and just to put Linux on it and play around with it. Uh yeah. I I I want one, but I don't want yeah. <laughs> I don't want to pay the Apple tax. <laughs> what? <laughs> they're, they're, they're Pedro already technically has already exists. <laughs> yes. I listen. I can put a Raspberry Pi in a laptop case Actually. too. <laughs> we'll get to that later on. But uh, yes. <laughs> here's an old one. I have two different versions: the Intel and the ARM. <laughs> okay, fine, fine, you wacky kids. Let me revise that. I want an ARM laptop like everyone at home that you can use for productivity and do stuff. With. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's a bit more of an ask, yes. And I yes. think in that case, the uh, the M1 um, MacBook would very much fit the bill, but 
Uh, even on x86, when Apple first introduced the T2 security chip, they made it extremely inconvenient to get Linux on it. And it took a while for people to find how to work around it to actually get Linux on one of those laptops. So assuming they didn't mm -hmm. double down on stupid because they're Apple, uh, the probably it will be just as difficult to get I don't think so. Linux on one of the new ones. People, uh, <laughs> I've seen some tweets from uh, people that were like, you know, this is this is going to be doable. Like, oh yeah, Linux, like, it is doable. Yeah, <laughs> I don't doubt people will work. find a way to do it. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. What, what I'm getting at is, I don't think Apple is blocking Linux. No. Okay, so on their device. as long as they haven't you know, completely gone off the deep end and blocked everyone from that's doing like anything. Biggest, I could be wrong, but that's what I was reading from it. I don't think this is like the, you know, iDevice. This is going to be a bit more open. Okay, that's... I'm hoping. All right. <laughs> I'm <laughs> hoping. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah like, like Linus, you know, it would be nice to have a, uh, a MacBook that just works out of the box with Linux, with everything, including the Wi-Fi. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's yeah. always been an issue. <laughs> but lots of us Linux users and developers run Linux on Macs. So this makes this is a good ask, Linus. Definitely. You know, it would be nice if Apple made that it made Linux officially available on their Mac or or officially official to install on the on the Macs, mm -hmm. uh, like Dell and Lenovo. Just makes sense. I think it'd be really neat. It's time. And it's it's time. I know, you know? <laughs> Linus is definitely one of the people. He has um, very strict sound requirements, and that is a very big appeal. You might not think about for a lot of people is we've just got a custom to like loud, shouty laptops, x86 laptops <laughs> that are just vroom, <laughs> the new Macs are fanless. Yeah. Yep. No. Oh. Beautiful and silent. I don't know. It's something to look into. What is Ubuntu Web Remix? So, uh, uh, well, uh, I suppose we need to thank Linux Nuru for <laughs> bringing this to our attention, because yeah, it is a distro that tries to do the same thing that Chrome OS does, uh, but it uses Firefox. Now, it's not develop Firefox into its own um, desktop environment like Chrome OS did because they they seem to be using GNOME. That uh, app shelf looks very, very GNOME. Uh, but it is, yeah, it, it, it just does all the things that you would expect Chrome OS to do except for running Android apps. And maybe if that is in fact GNOME, it probably won't run as well on low-end uh, passively cooled Celerons or ARM laptops so that, that that's the thing that I am still curious to see I did download it but I haven't loaded it up on anything just yet but it is yeah it it's supposed to be a bare bones ish uh, version that's just supposed to get you connected to the interwebs using Firefox instead of Chrome which is interesting it's an interesting proposition nowadays i guess <laughs> yeah well this is um this is awesome because uh like uh pedro was saying you know having firefox as the alternative for for chrome is is really what we need on our chromebooks we need firefox os on them instead of chrome chrome os chrome os but it's so nice to see fast progress on on the uh this chrome os alternative um especially because it just started in the summer and that was when we talked about it here on lwdw so mm. that's um the the neat thing about this is it does have a, a it, it's got a website link to their app store which yes. is really nice and, and they're curating they do apps have right now experimental <laughs> heavy uh emphasis on the experimental bit uh <laughs> for android app support yeah and they specifically say may not work properly uh if you're loading this from a live cd or a virtual machine so yeah all right that's the thing. might be a bit of a toss-up <laughs> um it, it's something to experiment with right now it's not necessarily yes. ready for production <laughs> all right right on right on <laughs> i can dig that but uh, i saw this because all the kids man yeah. Every everybody, Rust is the new <laughs> Ruby on Rails. Yes. <laughs> we just need to. It's a bad analogy, but come on, everything needs to be in Rust. <laughs> now, and I get it. I get it. And one thing that I saw that uh, kind of got my interest was a little thing called Ruffle because I, I'm interested in flash preservation, Joe. 
Yeah, definitely. So, like Ven was saying,、um, we actually might have found the answer to playing our old flash games and animations with Ruffle. Ruffle is an Adobe Flash Player emulator written in Yay Rust, and it works as a standalone app,、um, as an app for the web, and as a web browser plugin. And it's really easy to install. And、uh, they actually have a demo page that you can test several games and animations, and they all work really great. And it does play most Flash S SWF games and animations, but it doesn't play the one. If it doesn't play the ones that you want to play correctly, consider contributing and testing for them. They're trying to get you know all of them to work. <laughs>、mm. So、that's which I did. Thing. <laughs> yes, <laughs>、uh, I think it was Daisy that brought it up on Discord、uh, earlier in the week. It's like, oh, look at this.、Uh, I wonder if this works any better than any of the other uh, Flash uh, emulators from back in the day. And I can actually play the Binding of Isaac、uh, at more than four frames a second. It's like, okay, I did buy that particular Humble Bundle <laughs> back in the day. So I went to Humble, downloaded it,、uh, the SWF.、Uh, Put it through、uh, the ruffle、uh, test, and no, no, magnificent three FPS. <laughs> <laughs> kudos,、uh, major kudos to、uh, the ruffle people because、um, Mango HUD actually worked. You could actually launch it with Mango HUD, and it would show it. That's how I got the three FPS readout. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's、uh, <laughs> it, it's not quite there yet, but. Maybe very very soon it will be. So especially for games like The Binding of Isaac that are so、mm -hmm. very well, that, complex. Okay, yeah, yeah, I was about to say that's asking an awful lot of it. They have、um, several sponsors, including Newgrounds. That was my first thought to it. I'm like, oh man, because Newgrounds、mm -hmm. that that was our YouTube back in the day. You know, we didn't have streaming video, but hey, we could you know watch Flash animations and play Flash games. Mm -hmm. That's really great. That that is there.、Um, maybe one day it'll play Binding of Isaac. But I do know that the Web Archive is going to be using this to serve their Flash in the future. And yeah, it's really awesome. That's a good thing. Also, Adobe Open Source Flash. Come on, you've already killed it.、Mm -hmm. I mean, that, let's just be honest with each other. You need to do it. You need to do it. But. Here's something I ran away because I know、uh, we're kind of stuck at home. A lot of people are stuck at home, and if you're an educator or if you have to do presentations, you're most definitely, more than likely, not set up to、um, do that. You know, you're like, "Why? What do I gotta get? Like a green screen or、uh, uh, what? <laughs> How about you just do it with your webcam?" Yeah. So this I ran across. I'm like, "This is kind of interesting. This is Camboard. This basically will turn your webcam." Into a whiteboard, so you can just print off piece、so、of paper. So cool! Yeah,、mm -hmm. and it's got little QR codes, and with the software, it's going to pick it up. It's just using Python, and it's going to detect that, and it'll frame it, and boom! Then all of a sudden, that piece of paper is going to be your full screen. It's going to stay in frame, and you can do stuff with your um, you know, just um, get a negative of it, or just blank it out, so you're going to be seeing the text. I think it is、uh, might be useful. I wanted to throw that in there, and I mean, you can use it with Zoom, Skype, MS Teams, and all the fun stuff. Easy to set up,、uh, relatively easy. You know, if you're looking for like you know a button, maybe not, but you can save everything. You can run it Blackboard mode. Yeah, I'm. That's pretty cool, man.、Uh, you know, color invert, sharpening, all the fun stuff that you would expect to see. Now, the only problem I have with it. <laughs> <laughs> is like, where's the difficulty level for this? You know, setting it up, installing it, getting it to work with Skype or anything like that. That's not difficult. The difficulty problem for me is this requires a printer. <laughs> Go to or FedEx, a really、then. steady hand. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if you have a really steady hand, you can actually draw the symbols yourself. You just have to make sure that they're all about the same size that the camera recognizes. Oh. Those are the markers that I'm looking for. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really FedEx, steady hand, maybe. <laughs> go, go to your printouts. That's where I take everything to get printed. Oh man! <laughs> Bit of a、uh, well, okay. How do I want to phrase this?、Uh, a, a door six point four came out、um, earlier this week, and about an hour later, a door six point five came out. 
Why? Because they messed up something with the export. But it is here. This is the official 6.5. This is the DAW that we currently use uh, to record everything at LGC. It, it takes care. I use it. It's my plug-in host. It does all my mix minus stuff. But yeah, this is a hot new version. If you want to go play with it, uh, you can build it from source. As always, you can get it for, from your distribution if it shows up on Arch and all that fun stuff. Binary is available for backers. As always, that's what I'm running. But the big thing in this release is the addition of support for VST3 plugins. This is great. I've been looking forward to that. Uh, it, I did notice that it auto hides VST2 plugins out of the box. If it sees one that's, you know, matched with VST3, that caused a little bit of confusion. But uh, there's also better handling of MIDI encoders. The generic MIDI support's been fixed. Uh, WebSocket JS supports uh, that should now work with MIDI strips. And there's been several fixes for a door and a Raspberry Pi. That's right. You can take a Pi 4 and turn it into a little mini DAW. If you're just like recording at home, you got like a guitar, maybe a vocal track. That's a cheap way to play around with it without having to set up an entire um, box dedicated for audio. I thought that was neat. I wanted to give it a mention. Deal with it. I, mm -hmm. I don't think anyone's going to take you to task for that. Come, come on, Pedro, Pedro <laughs> fight me on it. <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> I will fight you on a great deal many things. In fact, I love arguing on the internet. Mm. Not that. <laughs> okay. Well, fine. You can argue with me about pipe wire because nah. these are audio. This is the audio related segment. Uh, Fedora 34, there's a change. Route all audio to pipe wire. This is a proposal. So the idea here is to something I think most people can agree with uh, to nuke Pulse Audio from orbit. And all right, with this proposal, <laughs> all roads will lead to pipe wire, and this would be really big for desktop users. I mean, looking to take advantage of your audio interface or just uh, the confusion between like setting up Jack or Pulse or dealing with Ulsa is going to handle it all. Pipe, pipe wire is the chosen one. It is the chosen one, but I just hope it doesn't turn out like Vader, man. You know? <laughs> no! Right. <laughs> this thing's going to need like 11 metachlorians or whatever you're, you're supposed to have. Um, now maybe you don't even know what pipe wire is. Pipe wire is going, hopefully, it's planned to be the one sound server to rule them all. And uh, you're going to be able to get support. Like a Pulse Audio application, it's like, hey, yeah, I can handle your Pulse. Or if you get a Jack application, hey, I can handle it. A lot like Core Audio for Apple. A couple of things uh, I was asked earlier this week, I think the mentor hit me up and he's like, yo, are you playing with this? I can't play with it in the studio right now. And I've brought it up um, with a developer who was um, still waiting on NetJack 1 support to land in Pipewire because everything in the studio is audio over uh, IP. You know, I'm gonna minimize cables where I can. Also, uh, I want to see support for uh, Fado drivers i want to see a fado back end mm -hmm. um so people can take because he also stack for firewire devices takashi's done a great job but none of those are ready for production they're like oh it technically kind of works until they explode and catch on fire which they all do um yeah this this is uh this is very interesting with so even if you even if you don't care you're like i just want to plug stuff in and it works this is going to make your life easier this, yeah, this and actually nice. have it remember when you plug something in and it's like, I want this coming out of the headset and I want this coming out of the soundbar across the room. And then you make the accidental mistake of, say, plugging in a uh, input and output interface and it automatically defaults to the new device. It's like... Yes. Seriously? <laughs> Just the great, and imagine having like a low latency. I was talking at the beginning of the show. I was like, yeah, okay. I Here's the basic thing. Monitoring yourself. If you're streaming, you want to be able to monitor yourself uh, with OBS. Pulse Audio is such a latency nightmare. Even on this system, I was just laughing. Like it, it was off bad enough to, you know, uh, almost a full second off where it just wrecks your ability to talk. That one... <laughs> but out of the box pipe wire it's designed closer to jack and i mean it has the blessing of um jack developers and like yeah this is seen as the future of the software and just having a low legacy sound server this is gonna make yeah. me very happy 
And I'm so happy it's going to be backwards compatible with ALSA and because they're going to have an ALSA plugin that routes to Pipewire, which is really wonderful because there are those of us who run old mm -hmm. apps um, that use ALSA and OS. So that PADSP all the things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're, <laughs> it's, it's all going to be backwards compatible with all the things. I, I want to see it. And Pipewire is... Um, Again, it's going to be compatible with everything. It's going to have the option, like if you need to, add, you're not going to have to worry about that. You know, you're like, oh, mm -hmm. this was using an also back. Oh no, it just works. Yes, it's great. it just works. <laughs> nice. And Pipewire is something that we're going to need, not just for audio, but for WebRTC, um, screen recording, and all this other fun stuff. Uh, in ten years, when Wayland's ready, so <laughs> we can totally have Pipewire. Don't don't tie yourselves down to Wayland. We can totally have Pipewire completely uh, replace G Streamer if need be, long before Wayland. <laughs> oh, oh please, that would be nice. <laughs> it is brilliant, but um, since we're talking about Fedora type products, let's uh, yes. keep going with that. Yeah. So uh, this next one is uh, well, it's flat packs. They're not as bad as snaps. Still questionable uh, use on the desktop, but at least they're not snaps. Uh, this is uh, the first unstable release on the series leading up to 1.10. So says Alex Larson. And the big one seems to be getting the OS tree metadata and setting up the prerequisites for installing a flat pack on a system will supposedly be faster now they've done a lot of optimizations in the background and uh, a lot of summaries of everything that it would need and it also uh has the side effect of allowing people to only see or download a certain subset of flat packs mm -hmm. let's say you have a distro that you only want to provide um FOSS software with it so you only see the FOSS flat packs, you don't see anything else. You can do that now without having to create a separate repository and having to duplicate the packages to that repository. Now you can actually see the metadata per whatever subset you define yourself, which is nice. It's actually really nice. <laughs> yeah, faster so, is definitely better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, and I, something I was really happy about is now during a universal Flatpak update, Flatpak will now automatically add uninstall operations for end of life runtimes that are unused. And mm -hmm. uh, this will make it lots, a lot more cleaner to use. Yeah, not sure. uh, taking up 10 gigs of just uh, old, uh, <laughs> old, yeah, <laughs> old runtimes that nothing is using. <laughs> yeah. What do you get against snaps, Pedro? Everything? <laughs> Come on, man. Love you. <laughs> be, be a rebel. Let's go install some snaps tonight. Uh, I can set a laptop with just default Ubuntu and then wipe it afterwards. That's fine. Fine. <laughs> hey, um, <laughs> containers, I mean, that is its thing. Uh, someone's going to have to, again, they have to be explained to me on the desktop, I, I got to admit. For like trying an app, I think it's fine, but. But it, it, if, even if it's just for trying and it's for intended for desktop use, app images. Yeah. App no. images, that's, best That's my waifu. favorite format. That's no. <laughs> <laughs> but what about updates, Pedro? <laughs> you can update the whole thing. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, Um. what's G-Compress? Oh, uh, this is awesome. Other than so, just being old. Yeah. Did you complete? It's, <laughs> it's 20 years old now, and it now has is on version 1.0. Gcompress is a suite of educational software for kids that has been used for years in schools and on in Linux distros that are used to teach children computing in third world countries. And it's it's on every platform, Windows, Mac, and Linux. And the new, the big deal here is this new version has a new activity settings menu with a data set selection for more than 50 activities, allowing you to choose more specifically what can be learned on the activities. And there's a new analog electricity activity, which this is really cool. Uh, they've been working on this for a while. It teaches, teaches students how to draw circuits and run simulations. 
and that's it's a basic really... drag and drop circuit maker yeah it's hey, really how long really... is that taking <laughs> yeah no, no, i know this. i know exactly <laughs> this is great because you can show your kid this and wonder how uh, you, you can feed into it um yeah because mm -hmm. at least when they start tearing your electronics apart they're gonna have some idea what they're doing yeah, yeah and it's, it's you're just nice. probably gonna have to point out it's like that's the resistor <laughs> oh it yeah. looks nothing like no but that's the resistor and think about it you can get little Susie a hot air flow station uh workstation um you know for their fifth birthday yeah <laughs> well it's really nice because it's a compliment that you know giving a, giving your kids a, a breadboard you know to experiment on and they'll un understand it a little more using the software and so it makes it makes using those kits easier and they're learning you know science and technology and all the things yeah. and there's yeah. also actually in this version new activities for addition subtraction and typing as well so it's really come a long way in these 20 years been really impressed with this progress and this is a piece of software that's really easy to set up on a raspberry pi and more importantly yes. um, it's available on android play and f droid for mobile yes. so mm -hmm. very nice <laughs> pedro go install it you, you can get the circuit <laughs> actually i might uh I, I might actually give it a try because i mean i can't hate on something if i've never tried it <laughs> And I'm always down for hating something. <laughs> Here, let, let me fill in for the audience. Since when? <laughs> Have you not been paying attention? No, I haven't, really. <laughs> that makes two of us, then. Jill, it's on you. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty cool, man. Uh, Gcompress.net, that's been around for a long, long time, man. Yes. Uh, it's educational software. It's a great thing to have. Another great thing to have is the ability to do the show. If you uh, want to help us out, that's patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Look at that segue. Deal with it. Mm. <laughs> we got a bunch of membership <laughs> levels and just a bunch of awesome people who help us do this. Loud, live, independent, commercial free, all that fun stuff, which is <laughs> legit. And uh, we get to make some cool educational videos of our own. Stay tuned for uh, some more advanced audio stuff coming from me. But stick around for your name in the credits. We've got a store, store.linuxgamecast.com. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for shameless self-promotion. But Merch. Merch. <laughs> See, we yes, got merch on. Com. I have the one, shirt, the stickers, pink one chair mugs. shirt. And I think that I'm the only, <laughs> only person with the pink one chair shirt. <laughs> that you know of? <laughs> that I know of, unless Ben grabbed one. <laughs> ben did say he got one of each, so probably. Oh, I have one of everything. <laughs> <laughs> but do you have the pink ones? Yeah, so I have one of everything. Okay. Sorry. Oh, well, I have all the pink <laughs> Not ones too. Not exclusive anymore. <laughs> yeah, I have all the pink ones too. <laughs> mine aren't even opened. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, see? collector's items. Yeah, mine are collector's items. <laughs> hey, I beta tested mine. <laughs> You just oh yeah, you have the bug to prove yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, three point one four. Turkey pie. Tis the season to mm. yummy, yummy, yummy. Can't wait to have that soon. <laughs> Yay! So I was really, really, really excited about this. This that is that looks like a disease the, type writer. <laughs> this is the dev term from the company Clockwork Pie. It is an open source portable terminal for every Linux nerd and developer. <laughs> it's it's really cool. So for those listening on audio, it's an A5 sized notebook with a 6.8 inch ultra wide IPS screen and a clock, clockwork pie mainboard. And it's just, it's so good, geeky and retro. And you can actually pre-order or the kits starting at $219 and it's supposed to ship by April, 2021 very good there Oof. um it's okay. that, very that, impressive that, that's a bit of a price <laughs> <laughs> it's well it's actually good considering um you get their clockwork pie and uh the ips screen well that, that's kind of an expensive piece of kit there okay all right. um, <laughs> yeah but yeah no you can and tell it's one of the uh <laughs> it's one of the clockwork um devices because it, it's got the two little knobs on the side yes we uh <laughs> 
we mentioned i don't know if we actually mentioned it on this show or if it was on linux gamecast or at some point mm -hmm. in between uh we talked about those game shell uh cases for the uh the clockwork pies it's like why does it have uh frankenstein twirly bits <laughs> yeah that's oh and so true chick link I'll tell he you says what, in chat on, reminds on. me of a trs-80 Pedro, I'll tell you what, because I those Frankenstein awesome. kits actually exist. How's that pre-order going? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still waiting. Uh, two months. Yeah, it's the 25th now. So two months. It's been over two months. Mm. <laughs> Never again. <But laughs> so, this is awesome. It's yeah, like that, my... that, that's neat. I could see somebody picking up yeah. one of those, uh, you know, just to have it or also just for the challenge of putting it together. You know? Yes. That'd be great. That'd I can see this appealing mm -hmm. to the cyber deck crowd as well. It, oh, it's definitely. got that same it is. And, style. You know, being, <laughs> being able to look at it, I'm like, and that's something you could put together at home without, you know, really having to, it doesn't look like you're going to have to break out a soldering iron. So, you know, it's yeah. fun to do something yourself, put it together. Like, it's great. And, you know, if you want to have the look of a classic portable computer of your, there we go. And huh. it's not too hard to put together. So. <laughs> Tinkerboard 2, Asus, uh, along with everybody else, um, since the original Raspberry Pi came out, I'm like, we can do that to you guys, but they, they always seem to mess it up somehow, Pedro. Yeah, so <laughs> uh, Asus uh, had released a Tinkerboard back in the day. It was an interesting, it's like, oh, you can do that. Uh, we can do that too. And it wasn't great. And now they have the Tinkerboard 2 and the Tinkerboard 2S. There's, uh, they, they both use the exact same SOC, which um, I'm like, wait a second, the rock, sh the rock chip, uh, 3399. Huh. Where have I seen that before? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so yeah, no, I totally got one of those and, uh, it's got, uh, two gigs around. It has a teeny tiny little M.2 port that you can use for whatever you'd like it does have a uh, usb 3.2 gen 1 type c try saying that three times fast <laughs> and three usb 3.2 gen 1 type a's uh so yeah uh, it uses an actual barrel jack for power it doesn't use a type c even though you could totally use the type c for power but whatever uh there's, there's dedicated bar barrel jack for that uh full-size hdmi full-size uh, Ethernet port and 40-pin GPIO, very much in the exact same form factor as the Pi, so that will immediately look familiar to everyone. And um, oh, slight correction, 4 gigs of uh, LPDDR4, not 2. I was looking at the Tinkerboard 2 right above the 4. I, so. I'm sorry, Peter, <laughs> it sounded like you said not 8. Yeah. <laughs> yes, no, not so 8. No, no 8. Aww. Just, just talk, talk, pff, toss it. I, I, I will not have that in my presence. <laughs> you, what do you, but yeah, it's the you, exact uh, same SOC that's in the Pine phones and the Pine tabs and the Pine book pros. It, yeah, it, it, it's that one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, at least there's mm -hmm. a bit of an ecosystem for that then. Yeah, there mm. is. Uh, there's actually a lot. I, I was looking at the uh, Pinebook Pro forums to see what kind of shenanigans people have gotten up to. And there, people have gotten a lot of stuff to work. It, it's kind of impressive. <laughs> That's pretty cool. What do you have against barrel jacks? Or would you would you be happier if they had like rhombus jacks? I'm talking about <laughs> more of the form factor because, you know, you got the pie. Mm hmm. And then you have something that's the size of a USB port, but it's just for power. But but you think about it. Uh, oh, oh, so you, you like the... It, it's like a USB-C power port that doesn't instantly snap off if you look at it wrong. Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, there's enough surface contact for the USB-C. The uh, micro HDMI is not so much. You, you but... don't realize that you just broke it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I looked at it wrong. Yeah, right. no, these micro HDMIs, I don't have a lot of faith in them. No. <laughs> um, that's one of the advantages of the Pi, though. If you have a just regular size uh, HDMI cable, you can just kind of wedge it and it'll hover. It'll be hover Pi. Yeah. yeah so, so, <laughs> I, what I was doing with the entire Pi cam thing, the Pi was just sitting over here, just like mm, hanging out like that. <laughs> I was poking mm. at it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, we got to get out of here, everyone. But before we do, if you want to leave us a message, how can they do that? You can do that fairly easily. 
You, um... Imposter, bro. No, no, no. Yep. See, uh, nope. I was going to make a joke, but I realized then that it would be very inappropriate, so better not. <laughs> Go to latestgamecast.com. That is always appropriate. Well, sometimes. But usually more appropriate than um, whatever uh, was going on in my head at that time. <laughs> the... <laughs> Pedro did make a joke, yes. <laughs> the contact form is cleverly hidden uh, behind the contact button, so just tap on that, fill out the form, pick LWDW, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, let us know what you've been working on, if you have any pie projects that you'd like to try and get done, or if you saw a project that you really want to get done, but you ran into a bit of a snag. Let us know. Tell us about Linux. That's pretty cool. And you can always uh, <laughs> hop at our Discord during the week. We're there. Uh, that's available for patrons. Mm -hmm. Or just uh, you leave a YouTube comment. No promises on that. We'll definitely read them. But yeah, if you want to get in touch with us directly, the best way to do it. Okay. We got to bounce out of here, everyone. Have a great yeah. rest of the week. And um, keep playing with penguins, man. Because Yes. Keep those penguins marching. <laughs> marching penguins. Yes. You don't get marching <laughs> orders. Marching penguins. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah, penguins no. and it doesn't work <laughs> Aww. apollo waddle, waddle, apollo waddle. mias 27 yes i have a trashy 82 which i adore and love as well <laughs> that's a very oh, cool I want that one. color <laughs> i still want one of those uh, raspberry pi 400s I do. Yes. Oh, no. I'm, I'm, I want one with oh, um, I'm supposed to get mine in the, in at least three or four days, so that's good. I'm happy, okay. finally. <laughs> I shall be poking you for um, performance numbers and things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I think the holiday might throw off the shipping a bit, but <laughs> it's coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bye, bye bye. Bye, everyone. We love you.